Amen. Amen. If I were to put a title, it's where I'm going to pick up where I left off. Amen. Amen. If I were to pick a title, I would say the power of the few. Somebody say the power, the power. of the few. The power. Amen. Amen. You might think that few could be two or three. It could be a thousand. It could be 300. But the few against the many that have come against God's word because, believe it or not, saying we're in a spiritual warfare. St. Matthew chapter 18. St. Matthew chapter 18. Amen. Look at somebody say, the power, the power of, the of the few. That means you and me. Amen. Because our people think you need a whole big crowd to give God the praise. Amen. One thing, about when, one thing about God's word that I love is that you and I got to come to understand that anybody, if you take your Bible and all the promises that's in the Bible, all the promises that's in the word of God, amen? If you take it and, and you and someone else touch, as in touching and agreeing based on God's promises, you will never be outnumbered or outdone. Amen. Whatever God has in store for you, God can reward you according to his word. Amen. You got to remember that today. Amen. So all you need is an agree partner. All you need is somebody to be in agreement with you based on the word of God. Amen. That's all you need, somebody to agree. Can you touch and agree with me? My sister, my brother, can you touch and agree with me based on the promises, based on the word of God? Amen. And you'd be surprised what God has in store. Amen? Amen. You believe that today? Amen. All right, then. Then we're going to see how God operates. Amen? I'm here to tell you there's power in few, whether it be two or three. Sometimes you're outnumbered, wondering, huh? If I'm going to get through this, wonder if they're going to keep on riding me until I get tired. Am I going to give up or give in? No, no. When you touch and agree with your brother, your sister, when you agree with your prayer partner, it could be your husband, your daughter, your family members, your brother, your sister, a family member. It could be someone that you know that's close to the Lord. It could be your pastor. With. Pastor, can you touch and agree with me? Based on God's word, you find out what's written in God's word based on his promises. God was going to fulfill that which he has spoken. Somebody say amen. amen. It don't matter what others may look on you and think. It's what you agree with God on. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 18. Hallelujah. Verses 1. Amen. Look at somebody said the power of the few. Amen. We see here in chapter uh, 18, starting at verse 1, Jesus is talking, and we see that uh, at this time came the disciples unto Jesus. And when they came to Jesus, they began to ask him a question, Lord, who is the greatest in the kingdom of God or in heaven? Now, that sounds like a pretty legitimate question. They want to know, out of all the angels, out of all the archangels and people that are in heaven, who is the greatest? And Jesus said and came and, and called a little child unto him, a little old child, and set him in the midst of all these disciples, these men that come from every walk of life. He set this little child there, and he said unto them, listen carefully now, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. You came from a child, you got to be an adult, but now Jesus wants us to be in childlike faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Childlike faith, become as a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That don't mean you as an adult go around acting like you don't know nothing, acting like a child. He's not talking about that. He's talking about have childlike faith, but believe in God regardless of the cost. Amen. Believe in God regardless of the circumstance. Believe in God regardless of what you're going through. Amen. Verse 4, he says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself Amen. as his little child, that same person, whether he be an adult, a young adult, whether he be married, husband, wife, if they humble themselves, that be the same as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. When you're going through something, Lord, keep me humble. That I don't get out in front of you, and I don't get disgusted or upset by what's happening in my life, but let me stay humble because in due season, in 
in due season, God is going to heal your mind. God is going to heal your body. God is going to heal your soul, regardless of what you're aching on the inside. He says in verse 5, Whosoever after this child has humbled himself shall receive one such as little child in who name? In my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend cause this child to sin, thus these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him or her that a millstone, let me explain that, were hung about his neck and that he was drowned in, in the depths of the sea. God is saying to the world and to those demons and spirits that are attacking you and me, it is better that they take a millstone that will grind the mill in the mill house that weighs an average of 150 pounds. Come on, somebody. They hung about their neck and they went and jumped in the sea and took their whole life just to offend one of God's little ones that looked like you and me. Why is that so important? Because we're living in a day and time where people offend you based on radio. They, they, they have all kind of programs on TV. You and I are offended that we don't even want to watch TV no more. All the mess that's on TV, you just try to find a channel where something is decent, even in the Christian program. Oh, come on, somebody. All you got this mess on is the housewives of Atlanta. They're like the housewives of Roxbury. All you got is the preachers of LA, like the preachers of Roxbury. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't want to hear this. I'm going to preach it anyhow. I'm going to teach it anyhow because it's important that you and I understand that we're living in the last and evil day. Why is this so important? Because he was saying there are many that are in the body of Christ that will be offended by taking a stand for the gospel. You and I can easily be offended. They already took prayer out of school. Already took the Ten Commandments out of Washington. Oh, come on, somebody. The chambers of the House and the Senate out of the school committee. They already took the Ten Commandments and prayer out of both the House and out of school. They already telling the children they can't worship their true and living God. And now they're teaching all kind of stupidity stuff in the middle school, trying to distract our young people to believe in something other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Am I talking right? You listen to your children in middle school, and they will come home and tell you, we learn about Buddhism. We learn about Islamic. And we want to all be in the same melting pot. Come on, somebody. They all want to make us one. And, and, and you got people, even though you believe that God is able to heal you, you go to a doctor and he want to put his hands on you and he don't even believe in the same true living God. Amen. 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 He said, woe to whom offenses may come because the people will offend you in their word, their deed, their action, the way they look at you, the way they talk to you, how they treat you, how they speak to you. Come on, somebody. You trying to get your money out of your bank. That's your money. And the woman behind the counter got an attitude. Am I talking right? That's your money. But she got an attitude. You trying to pay a bill and they ask you what you want. I'm, I'm here to pay a bill. <laughs> Never mind. Verse 7 says, Woe unto the chapter 18, verse 7 of St. Matthew. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7 says, Woe unto the world. Everybody say, Woe. Woe. Unto the world. Unto the world. Why? Because offenses, for it must need be that offenses come. Amen. They're going to come. You might as well prepare yourself Amen. and be already prepped that people are going to say things and do things to you. That they, they don't mean no good to you. So you might as well be prepared. Anything and everything could come out of somebody's mouth. You'd be surprised what people would say. But he said, woe to the world because of offenses. For it must need be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense is coming. 
that man or that woman that offend you, they better look out. Because they're messing with a child of God. They're messing with a woman of God. They're messing with a man of God. They're messing with a little child of God. These pedophiles, come on somebody. These perverted people that are on the internet, come on somebody. The government already know who they are because every time you hit a website, correct me, Minister Green, if I'm wrong, but every time you hit a website, a cookie pop up. And a cookie pop up on your website means that government has sent a contract on top of your house to find out if you're trying to join ISIS or if you're a pedophile. And you start looking at all kinds of websites, them cookies start popping up, and next thing you know, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, come on somebody, will be knocking at your door. Why do you think the first thing they grab is your computer, your cell phone? They see where you've been on the internet. That's just what it is, internet. Come on somebody, you playing with a mouse, but it's really that spider that's after you. Oh, come on somebody. Are y'all with me on this? Don't act like I ain't lost my touch, because I ain't lost my touch. Come on, somebody. I'm going to preach it if I have to preach it in the mirror at myself. Come on, somebody. In verse 8, he says here, Wherefore, if thy hand offend thee, or thy foot, pay close attention to me. Don't nobody go out and get no hatchet. Don't you go plucking your eyes and cutting your hands off and your feet off, because he's trying to tell you something in a spiritual sense. Anybody in their right mind and love the Lord and love themselves won't hurt themselves. But Jesus said this so you'll understand. Therefore, if thy hands or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or main rather than having two hands or two feet and call and, and, and cast into eternal fire, everlasting fire. What bothered me is a man uh, that's blind and can't see. What bothered me is a man that gets to our eyes and can't see where he's going. Amen. What bothered me is a man that, that had no foot, can't walk. Amen. But a man that got two feet, he don't know what he's walking about. Amen. We see here in verse 9, and if thy eyes offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, neither be for thee to enter into thy life with one eye rather than having two eyes and cast into hell's fire. Sometimes you got to tell your eyes you can't look. Sometimes you got to tell your mind you can't observe. Come on, somebody, because today everything is out there. Pervertedness of all sorts. Come on, somebody. It don't matter whether you're a child, have a, a, a handheld iPod or iPhone, if they have access to the internet, they got so many websites that you can test something, something even pop up anyhow. Amen. And curiosity has always killed the cat. Amen. Come on, somebody. They find themselves looking at something, and you're wondering how they all already know. Amen. That's the hour that we're living in. Amen. For the Son of Man, in verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels, their angels, that's proof right there you got a God and an angel. Their angels, are y'all with me on this? Verse 10 says, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, despise not you or me, for our angels that God gave us do always behold the face of our Father. Amen which is in heaven. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the pain that you're up against. He knows the hurt that you feel on the inside and the trouble and the tremble and the hurt that lasts seems like a lifetime. God knows it all. But he's going to relieve you because there's power in the few. Look at somebody that says there's power in the few. That means two or more, and touching and agreeing. We're going to see that in a minute. He says here, for the Son of Man is come to what? Oh, my God. Come to save that which is lost. You and I was lost one time, but thank God he found us. Come on, somebody. Thank God. You hear people say, I found the Lord. No, you ain't found the Lord. The Lord saw you lost, and he found you. Come on, somebody. And you ought to thank God that you heard 
heard him call when he called you. I don't know about you, but I got to say, when I was about 21 years of age, seemed like a long time ago, and it was. Oh, my God. When I stop and think about all the time I could have lost out in life, but God spared my life because he found me because I was in trouble. And when you're in trouble, you go to the wall and know that you're going to have trouble. But when the thing about the Bible believing uh, in the body of Christ, when you got trouble, you got help from the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When you got help from the Lord, the world don't have no help. Amen. They go to the psychiatrist amen. and the psychologist. Amen. They go to drugs and other things and other measures to sustain them that won't keep them. Amen. But God will keep you. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, he says, the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost. When I got saved, I wonder what took me so long. When you're genuinely saved, you know, and ask the Lord, what took me so long? Here in verse 12, he says, how think ye, Jesus said, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not, huh? Does he not leave the ninety-nine? That's why you was able to keep yourself over the last three, four weeks because you had to sustain yourself through the word. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You know the message would have been preached just the same, but you had to go do some reading and study on your own. Amen. Sometimes God got a way of getting your focus and getting your attention back to where it needs to be. Come on, somebody. Whether you're in the preaching or not, you still got to study on your own. Amen. You still got to read the word on your own. Amen. You got to seek the Lord out on your own. Man can't save you. Only God can save you. The world can't save you. The world can't even put you in the grave. And I mean to tell you, regardless of what man may think, God always got the last word. He says here in verse 12, how in that he lead the 99. And, and then he says, go after the mountains and seek that which one has gone astray. Amen. It's important that preachers and evangelists and ministers of the gospel, when they know somebody is going astray, to reach out to them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. If they slap your hand, reach out to them again. Amen. Let them just keep reaching out to them until God says it's enough. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because either you're going to want the Lord or you're not going to want the Lord. Amen. Either you're going to seek for the Lord or you're not going to seek for him. But if you're going to seek the Lord, go for all your might. Go for all your power. Go for all your strength. And let God do the rest. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you a word of knowledge here. The troubles that you're going through, the temple that's left over, God is going to build something out of it. The trouble that you're dealing with today, whatever is left over, God is going to take the word and build something. He's going to build your house. But you got to hang in there. Hold on to the horns of the altar. Don't give up and don't give in. Whatever is left over from the timber of the troubles in your life, God is going to build your house. God is going to restore what you have already lost. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sometimes how we miss the things that are so sweet. All we need to be going is a week or two, three, four weeks. Come on, somebody. Uh, somebody I look at somebody and say, the power of the few. Come on, look over and reach your Bible out to somebody and let them touch it and say, the power of the few. When you touch and agree. When you touch and agree with your word of God, amen. My sister, my brother, can you touch and agree with me in the name of Jesus? I'm trusting the Lord for healing. I'm trusting the Lord for deliverance. I'm trusting the Lord for all kinds of great and marvelous things. When you touch and agree with someone, the power of the few. What are you saying? Just, just stay with me for a moment. I know the time get by real quick. He says, and if ye that, he had verse 13, he said, and if so be that ye find it, if ye find that one sheep going astray, verily I say unto you, rejoice, rejoice more than that sheep that is a 99 which went not astray. Come on, somebody. 
that went not astray. Come on, somebody. You're going to press your way. Come on, somebody. You're going to overcome. You done made up your mind. I'm going to get there. Come hell or high water. I want to see his face. I want to see Jesus' face. Out of all the things that he's done for me. Out of all that he took me through. Out of all that he protected me with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been so kind to me, and I have never yet ever seen his face. How good and kind has Jesus been to you? Verse 14 says, even so it does not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones shall go or perish. God wishes that no man shall perish. No man shall perish. But all shall come to the knowledge of the truth. That truth is in Jesus. Amen. He's the only truth. Come on, somebody. Amen. Moreover, that's a few more verses here. Moreover, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, come to your brother. Come to me. Come to your sister. Tell him or her their faults between you and them. It's between you and me now. Tell me my faults. Come on, somebody. And he shall hear thee, you gain your brother, you gain your sister. If they will not hear thee, then in the mouth of two or three witnesses, come on somebody, every word may be established. Verse 17 says, and if he shall not uh, neglect to hear thee, tell it to the church. That means the body that's the governing body of Christ. Come on somebody. Not to take up Sunday morning service, arguing and fussing, but there's a business time, come on somebody, that you discuss things. But if you elect to hear the church, let him be to thee as a, a brethren, a heathen, I'm sorry, man or publican. Thirdly, verse 18 says, just two more verses, three more verses. Thirdly I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind, if you bind it on earth, come on somebody, if you bind the Lord, shall be bound in heaven. Amen. And whatsoever is loosed on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Your report will come from heaven, because all authority is given to you from heaven. Amen. And whatever is bound on earth, can be bound in heaven. Amen. And whatever is loosed in heaven, can be loosed in heaven. Amen. That is the Father authority with all kind of power. Are y'all with me on this? Verse 19 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you, if two of you, all you need is one, two, come on somebody, shall agree on earth as touching anything, any of God's promise, that shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Get it in your mind. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. The power of the few. Look at somebody and touch them. Look at somebody and touch them. Say the power of the few. We're touching it and we agree. It's not the two of us. Oh my God, hallelujah. Yeah. But we can agree. Yeah. We're attached to the agree yeah. on the promises of God.
You got the power to touch and agree. You got the power to touch and agree. The power of few, the power of two, can touch and agree. And it shall be done according to my Father, which is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all, some of y'all owe God a praise. Some of y'all owe God a praise. Some of y'all owe God a worship. Some of y'all owe God a thank you. I just can't sit still. I'm beside myself. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be back in the house of God. Or I can praise him at home. But don't forget to gather together. Don't forget to assemble yourselves together. And wherever two or three touch it and agree in, there's power. I don't know how you can sit there. And the anointing is in this place. The power is in this place. The reality of God's word has manifested itself. Let me. Let me tell you. If it's healing for your knees, if it's healing for your back, my sister, Jehovah Rapha, in promises of God's word, I need healing for my feet, healing for my knees, healing for my back, healing for my finances, healing for my mind, healing for my soul, in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to play catch up. And I don't have no mustard. Oh, come on, somebody. But I don't mind giving him the praise. I don't mind worshiping him. I don't mind glorifying him. Because I hold in my life. I hold in my soul. His soul belongs to the Lord. I'm going to give him the praise. You ought to give him the praise. Let me see if I can get through these two verses here. Wait a minute, Jesus. You mean to tell me? I love to talk to the Lord. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. Sometimes I have some mental difficulties trying to read and understand and comprehend because I want to get it right. Come on, somebody. He says, Jesus said again, I didn't say it once. I didn't say it twice. But he said in verse 19 again, I say unto you that if two of you find another person of you shall agree on earth as touching, as touching any. Wait a minute, Lord. Did you say any? Did he say any? Look at somebody, he said any. I don't want you to get it confused. He said anything. Did he say anything? I mean, when Jesus said anything, you mean anything? I mean anything. You mean anything? I 
I mean anything. We demand and tell somebody to say anything. In the name of Jesus. say, for whom two or three are gathered, are gathered, gathered together, not just gather, but gather together in Jesus' name, while you're together, there am I, right in the middle, right in the midst. When you learn to agree with one another, and according to my Father's will, I'm right in the middle of what you're asking for, because it's been granted, it's been done by my Father above. My, my, my. Listen here. I know I have to do a part too. When Jesus had his 12 disciples, he sent them all out. But along with his disciples, he had 70 other disciples. And he said, I want y'all to go out two by two. Ain't that what he said? And he said, go in every town, every city, every, every place I myself will go. And I want you to go for healing and delivery of all manner of sickness and disease and cast out spirit, open the blind eyes, raising those that are sick. Come on, somebody. Delivering those that need to be delivered and preach the gospel. But I'm going to send you like lambs among wolves. Come on, somebody. But you're going two by two. If a one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand, it's 35 pairs of you. Uh-huh. Ain't that right? Amen. And if my map showed me correct, uh-huh. between the 35 pairs, there is as much as 350,000 power in their cells. Uh-huh. Are y'all with me on this? That means if all of us pair together and agree in the name of Jesus, God is going to do something. God is going to move some mountains. God is going to change some circumstances. If you read Luke, the 10th, the 10th chapter, if you look, read Luke chapter 10th chapter, you don't have to turn to it, but you can read it and write it down. These 70 paths went out in every town, in every city. Every time they said, in the name of Jesus, come on somebody. Demons were standing at attention. Come on, somebody. Sickness would uh, disappear. Disease of all men and all sorts would go away. They were going everywhere. I'm going to heal you and pray for you in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Wherever they went, in the name of Jesus. Wherever they ate, they prayed over their household. Whatever sins the people had, they were forgiven. After a period of time, all the 35 groups came back together. These 70 men came back, and they were so happy. Everybody says so happy. So happy. 
You know, when you agree with somebody in the name of Jesus, and you touch and agree, and they get a good report, they're so happy. Oh, come on, somebody. You might not understand the happiness. You might not understand the tears of joy. But I'm here to tell you, God will bubble your soul over with tears of joy. They came back. And I can see them in my own way. Not your way, but my own way. Jesus, man, you should have been there. One man was possessed, and the spirits come out of him. Another man, that everybody said, he's crippled. He ain't going to get up. He got up and started walking. There was another man, Jesus. He was blind. But every time I said, in the name of Jesus, he came looking. There was a man that couldn't hear. We put our hands over his ear, and God healed him. In the name of Jesus. They came rejoicing. They came happy. They came excited. Now, Jesus was just sitting there looking at them. Now, you don't understand where I'm coming from. He knew what power he had. You have been touched with a power that the world envy of. You see, the world is looking for power. But all power is a dame of God. Come on, somebody. You might not have a supervisor job, but you got the power of God. You might not be in charge of this section, but you got the power of God. You might not be in charge of this or that, but you got the power of God. And all power is ordained of God. Yes. And when you are touched and agree with a brother or sister in the body of Christ, Amen. your power quadruples. Yes. I mean, the math, you can't even figure the math out. Amen. How can one put a thousand to flight, uh -huh. but when you got two, yes. 10,000 take flight? Uh -huh. Now, you do the math. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, if I'm correct, algebra, come on, Rainer. If I'm correct, algebra say whatever's on either side of the equation have to be equal, ain't that right? Okay, I'm, I'm, so I'm trying to figure out, wait a minute, this can't be algebra. This must be some kind of strange, come on somebody. This is that math that come from heaven. This math come all the way from the throne of God when God said, I don't do math like man. If I say you got power of one to run a thousand, and I say if two come together and agree, you can beat back 10,000 demons. Yes. Yes. Only that man can come from God. Because you can't figure that kind of math. Because normally you would say, well, there's a thousand. One person can put a thousand. If it's two, then that's two thousand. Uh -huh. But he went from one thousand to ten thousand. Yeah. The person that added to the other person, you mean he got more power? No. He's saying the more power you put together, the more power you have. Hey. Hey. The more power you put together, the more power you have. Hey. The more you agree with somebody, the more power you have. Hey. Hey. They were so happy, brother. They were rejoicing, jumping up and down. All of them were trying to talk to Jesus at one time. You had to put it in your mind. That's the way I think. They were all cutting each other off. Oh, man, Jesus, I tell you something. said, wait a minute. You want to hear the story about this? this these people were hungry. You want to hear the story? Oh, they were tired, testifying. Come on, somebody. The spirit of prophecy. Come on, somebody. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Come on, somebody. They're out there prophesying about Christ, and things begin to happen. And Jesus is sitting there looking at them. Because, see, they was only thinking on the earthly plane. But Jesus said, no, no, wait a minute. Let me tell all y'all something. Come on, somebody. He knew what kind of spirits they were dealing with, what kind of demons. He said, I'm going to give you power to walk upon scorpions. Come on, somebody. Power to walk upon serpents. Come on, somebody. I'm going to give you power. He said, well, wait a minute before you get all excited. I don't mean to, I don't mean to steal your thunder. I don't mean to take your joy. He said, you're rejoicing, but I got something greater than what you're rejoicing over. The reason why that you're rejoicing and being happy is not because all these spirits are subject to you. You have to rejoice because God took the time. God took the time. And wrote your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
You want to rejoice? Rejoice. Because God wants your name down. I mean, you can see God. I don't know if God got a three-piece suit or what. He must got a special pen. Come on, somebody. I don't know where he was. He probably told Gabriel, bring me my book. Come on, somebody. Where is my book? And you can see God looking over into his eternal book. They said, I'm going to have to say that, boy. Come on, somebody. Let me pen his name. Come on, somebody. You can see the angels. You can see the angels rejoicing all over heaven. Remember, all heaven rejoice over one soul saved. Now, wait a minute. When God go to write your name, he didn't write William H. Watkins. Are y'all with me on this? Because I already looked up the name Watkins and Google it, and it's about, it's about 15,000 William Watkins with all different initials. When God wrote your name down in the book of life, I want you to understand it wasn't the name your mom and daddy gave you. It was the eternal name. And it was written by the hand of God. And the Bible said God is going to give you a new name. Written down in glory. And it's going to be written in a white stone. And know me. Know me. Know your name. So if you're running through heaven, Reverend Watkins! And I keep on walking. I said, that was my wrestling name. I don't think y'all with me on this. Look at somebody and say, do you know you got a new name written down in glory? You don't even know your new name yet. But your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you got to fight for all you know to keep it there. You got to fight for all you know to keep your name in God's Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, you may fall, or you may get knocked down, but a just man will rise up seven times in one day. But when the wicked fall, they fall into mischief. It ain't so bad getting knocked down as long as you're getting back up. It's when you don't want to get back up. Uh, he said rejoice. Because your name, your name, you can see the disciples standing there with their mouth dropped wide open. You ever heard, you ever seen somebody when they told you something you ain't never know? Come on, somebody. And they catch you totally by surprise, and you say, well, your mouth drop? You think if you ain't never had a drop mouth surprise, then you need one. Can you imagine them disciples? They all have been excited about the power of God and in the name of Jesus. They were touching and agreeing because two of them were together and they were laying hands on people and people were being delivered and people were coming to the Lord and God was saving people. They come back to Jesus and Jesus looked at them and said, wait a minute, I got something better than that. You're going to get happy, get happy. But I got something better than that. You can see the disciples looking at Jesus, all 70 of them with the other 12 looking on. Rejoice because your name Your name may not be no more on nobody else less, but thank God your name is written down. You have enough to get happy for right now. now I know some of y'all say, Pastor, you're going to have to hurry up. It's going to start snowing them. And I don't want to get caught out. <laughs> Never mind. You already been caught out in the blizzard. You know, Overcoming the snow in your neighborhood is a sign of persevering. Come on, somebody. Amen. Think about it, because you can be and go anywhere you want to go. Come on, somebody. I love them two days we had off in a row, two weeks in a row. Come on, somebody. Somebody say amen. 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping late, turning the blanket over. Come on, somebody. It's 1030. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 
Lord have mercy. Now my mom was working with me. But thank God for all things. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going to be finished. Go, get, just be patient with me. <laughs> you know, God can work with you if you work with him. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm do a part two for that. I want to tell you about somebody by the name of Jonathan. Mm -hmm. he was, the Bible said that the soul of Jonathan was knitted with the soul of David. Uh -huh. Jonathan was David's brother-in-law. Saul, the first king of Israel, was his father-in-law. And when Saul had started off right, but he got in a lot of trouble. Somebody said, stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. No, no, say it like you mean. Look at somebody and say, please stay out of trouble. Please stay out of trouble. And I want you to understand that Jonathan uh, knew that Saul began to dislike David to a point because David had received the spirit of God. And he was being set up to become the next king of Israel because of the disobedient, disobedient spirit that was upon Saul. The Bible said God sent an evil spirit to Saul. Are y'all with me on this? And the Bible said that, that there Saul was so mad that while they was all at the dinner table eating one night, uh, Saul was sitting there at the table playing with his spear. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Yes. A javelin. Y'all seen a javelin before, a spear. Mm -hmm. And while David was playing his harp, singing to the glory of God, he was, he was watching Saul. Right. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. You better watch Amen. as well as pray. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't care what the enemy is doing. Don't turn your back on the enemy. Amen. Come on, somebody. The Bible said when David was singing and praising God, he kept that spirit subdued. Uh -huh. But when David stopped, Saul took a spear, uh -huh. and the Bible said it went right past David's head. Amen. The Bible said that David ducked mm -hmm. and escaped out the door. Yeah. This happened about three or four times. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> After something that happened about one time, Charity, come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? Look at somebody and say, it don't need to happen but one time for me. Come on, somebody. I'm from North Carolina, and, and, and down in North Carolina, well, everybody, back when I was a kid, everybody had a truck. Uh, uh, for, for the most part, had a truck or car, a trunk, had a gun rack. They didn't have the laws like they had. Everybody had a gun. And when you would be in, be in the, uh, the Emerald Club, come on, somebody. Oh. <laughs> and somebody break out in a fight, and one guy said, let me go to my trunk. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to confess. That's why when I was at clubs and I was dancing, I'd be dancing by the door. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? Now, there's a reason. Now, you're laughing at me, but I was, I, was, I was smart like that. Oh, I'm dancing. The girl would say, well, you're always close to the door. <laughs> you, you, I tell her, you're going to see in a minute. <laughs> when the guy said, I'll be back, let me go to my trunk or go to my truck, well, you know, one or two things, you better whoop him before he get to the truck because when he come back, it ain't no question. Come on, somebody. Shoot first and ask question later. He come back, pile, 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 like wide up. Come on, somebody. If you up in that joint and they got but one door and he's standing in the door. Come on, y'all. Yo, you don't know where God delivered me from. When I would say, hey, Connie Mack, crazy heart. Let's, let, let's pull a snag or two. Stage right. <laughs> You better believe I was gone. I ain't got to get shot for nobody. Because you know there's a lot of people that look like you. And when you blind or high, everybody start looking alike. They start getting paranoid. They shoot at everything. Never mind. Never mind. You ain't never been in them clubs. Thank God for you. Your pastor was a rough pastor. Wait a minute, pastor. The spirit went right past David's head. You thought I lost my spot. 
went right past David's head. He slipped out the door. Jonathan said, my daddy don't like you. Let me tell you something. Michelle loved David. Jonathan loved David. But he knew they both was against David. I mean, loved David, but it, Saul knew. He hated David. But Jonathan and Michelle knew that their father hated David. And they tried to persuade David, hang around. Come on, somebody. But I want you to understand something. That uh, Saul said, if I can't get him with a spear, I'll mess him up by getting him involved with the Philistine. Now, let me tell you something. Now, don't get mad with me, y'all. I'm going to have to tell y'all this. But the Philistines that was in the land of Canaan, they used to like rotisserie dogs. Y'all like rotisserie chicken? Do you like rotisserie chicken? Okay, all right. Well, they like rotisserie dog, the Philistine. It was a delicacy. You can go look it up. You don't have to believe me. And that's why they were called dogs. Uncircumcised Philistines. Oh, come on, somebody. And they ate dogs. They loved dogs, and they, they kept dogs, but they roast dogs, and they ate dogs. That was a part of who they were. Go look it up. And, 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 and they figure that if we see it, David, uh, Saul saying, wait a minute. Now, I want, I want to get rid of him. And the only way to get rid of David, uh, I'm going to send him to the Philistine. And this is what I want him to do. Now, this, this bothered me, and it's going to bother you. But he said, I want you to go to the Philistines, and I want you to bring back a hundred foreskins of the Philistines' men. Foreskins meaning they had to be circumcised. Right. But in order for them to get circumcised, they had to kill them. Right. So David was smart. David said, oh, he wants 100. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to kill 200, and I'm going to bring them back to Saul. Now, this bothered me. What bothered me, because you didn't understand it, there's power with him few. Amen, Pastor. Amen. The Bible said that David brought back 200 foreskins of the Philistine men that he had to kill. But in those days, unlike today, we got gloves and gowns. The question I ask, who was counting the foreskin? Because that's just plain nasty. <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> just plain nasty picking up. That's nasty. Are y'all with me on this? You see what Saul was trying to do to David? But the devil said that David behaved himself wisely. He behaved himself wisely among the men in the king of Israel. But when Saul was trying to kill David, come on somebody, he fled to Samuel to tell Samuel, and Samuel and him stayed together. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.